All righty. I think we might still have a few people join in the next couple of minutes, but we'll get a slow rolling start so that uh, everybody uh, is able to keep up and uh, join us whenever they can. So uh, I mentioned before, but let's say it again. My name is Rachel Burbank. I am the customer advocacy lead here at Open Cities, and I've had the pleasure of uh, meeting some of you all in our customer advocacy check-ins. Um, but uh, I mostly, as you can tell, interact with our United States customers. I'm based out of Denver, Colorado. So um, really excited to be joining you all. It's been quite a long time since I was able to visit Australia, but I'm going to imagine that I am uh, sitting on some kind of sunny beach with you all, um, demonstrating our uh, new feature of custom documents. So um, the format of today is going to be uh, just a, a one-way webinar. So I'm going to be uh, demonstrating some of the functionality, explaining the building blocks behind it, but starting with uh, the, the reasons why and the, and the goals and values we were trying to achieve by building the custom documents feature to open forms. Um, but I'm joined by a handful of my colleagues that will be manning the chat. So if you have any questions, please feel free to pop those in the chat. Um, not only do we have uh, a couple members of our sport team, but also our product team here. So they are really the best people to answer any of those uh, technical questions or um, some of those use cases, uh, we'll definitely be happy to share uh, as much as we can. So our agenda for today, we're going to talk about why we built custom documents. Again, that value behind the feature and what we're hoping that you can achieve out of it. We're going to talk about the building blocks of custom documents. So that should be just line two here uh, and, and the, the, the backbones behind the functionality before we get into that feature demonstration, just to give you a bit of uh, context so that we really fully understand what you see when we, uh, when we go behind the curtains and look at uh, it in the wild and open forums. And then number four is what's next. So what you can expect from our roadmap as we continue to iterate on uh, open forums and our workflow features. So um, without further ado, let's start with why add custom documents to open forms or just to forms in general. So um, part of that, and first and foremost, is our continuation to commit to our commitment to helping you serve your residents better. So you remember our last webinar, we introduced open forms workflow. And we knew that when we had done that, we had taken a major step forward in digitizing the entire process that a request might go through. With OpenForms uh, request workflow, no longer does Joel at the front desk need to print a copy of a form that's been submitted and then take it down the hall to Nicole, who has to review it, and then take it upstairs to Kimberly in finance, who issues the receipt or the, or the check, right? Um, or imagine that in an email scenario, that Karen gets an email uh, request and <clears throat> And she has to manually forward that email onto uh, a person who she thinks can take care of that request. And in both of those scenarios, you may never find out if that request was completed unless you follow up personally. But you, of course, have your own job to do, right? So uh, remembering to stay on top of those things just to kind of get that closed loop of communication uh, is, is hard to come by. And so all of that now has been taken care of by the steps, the reviewers, the transitions, and the notifications of response workflow, really helping to automate that task accomplishment and the actioning of requests from your residents. <clears throat> but what about once those requests have been approved? How does a resident prove that they've followed the appropriate steps or that they've like paid the right fees and that they're in compliance with council's requirements when they're out in the world doing business and earning, earning their very necessary income, right? Incomes custom documents, and what that looks like is the ability to pipe data from a form, uh, pipe data from a response into other official records and documents, and then automatically send those documents to the people that need them so that they can go about doing their business. So what we're really hoping to do is get value out of the platform, not only for you in automating the, the, the workflow and the journey mapping of the process that, that you have on your internal systems, but even for the residents so that they can get everything they need in a really fast, timely fashion that's accurate and consistent, that's on your city letterhead, and that meets all of the requirements for them to be able to run their business as they need to. So we're going to talk about the building blocks of custom documents before we go into a feature demonstration, just to get some understanding of how it's all put together. So your first things first is a digital form, and you'll be really familiar with that, right? Your standard open form. In order to pipe information from a response into a document, we're going to need the resident to fill out that form. So you'll build your form as you normally would with all of the information that you might normally see on a PDF or a formal response. <clears throat> 
And then um, what we'll have next is a document template. So that form is going to collect a bunch of information through fields. And what we'll then do is map those fields into the template of a document. And that template um, is going can be a like such a, a uh, an official application, so something on a very styled and formatted PDF, a, uh, a tax invoice or a permit that somebody hangs in their windows. So something very something that requires more of a visual presentation and not just your standard form receipt that comes with that kind of uh, PDF output. So templates can be created in either Microsoft Word or in a fillable PDF and then uploaded into open forms where you've got a mapping sec a, a mapping interface to say, okay, I want to take this information from the open form and I want it to present in this part of the template. And we'll see an example of that in, in, uh, in action. And then finally, we've got notifications. So once those documents are mapped to the desired fields, you can attach them to notifications. And remember, notifications are those emails that get triggered by a single submission moving out of the hands of the resident and through the different steps of the workflow. So that as the submission advances, let's say it goes from the submit step into the check information step. And once that information is checked and approved, then it finally gets approved um, or, and, and then we trigger the document that we want to be sent out, then they get that certification, right? We don't want somebody to get a certification if their application gets rejected. So documents can be attached to those notifications from those workflow transitions and then uh, and sent automatically to your resident. And one thing I want to point out is while we are uh, while we find that the most common use cases for custom documents is going to go hand in hand with a response workflow uh, like this, that it is possible to attach custom documents to the default email that gets triggered when a resident submits it. So you don't actually you don't have to have a workflow set up in order to utilize custom documents. Um, but those are the most common use cases that we're finding. So in this example, we are showing it with uh, attachments in both the workflow and the uh, submission confirmation. <clears throat> so let's head into our feature demonstration and uh, bear with me one second while I just swap some screens here. And one more. There we go. Okay. Okay, so let's take this one over here. All right, in this particular example, what we're going to look at is the scenario where we want our residents to apply for a food truck permit. So I, Rachel Burbank, have a food truck called Rachel's Brownies, and I want to be able to apply with the city and not only get my application approved, but receive all of the necessary documentation back, such as my certificate that I can put in my window of my food truck that says I am a, a, an officially licensed food truck, or the tax invoice that I need to submit with my taxes when I file those. So. Um, you'll notice uh, our, our open form, and this is a, just a standard open form, nothing special about it, utilizing all of those fields that we know and love, like document uploads, your radio buttons, uh, even calculations, and uh, a payment field. So I'm able to pay my dues online and complete that transaction from start to finish. So. The other component, that, so that's step one, right? Our, our open form, our digital form. And step two is now our template. This is the document template. So the output of uh, this transaction is going to be, one of them is going to be a tax invoice. And a couple things to point out here. So what you'll notice are um, a couple of fields that are surrounded by two curly braces. And these are my placeholders. The, the appearance of these two curly braces to start and end a, uh, a term that does not have a space between it, that's, that's sort of what um, what identifies this as a, a field for open forms to map to is those curly braces and a term in the middle that does not have a space. So what I've done here is tell the system, okay, anytime we see this, anytime we see a, a, a field or a placeholder, we're going to pipe some information in. 
And so um, what's great about a Word document is that the system has the ability to, to flex. So if I have a really long address, or let's say we've got a paragraph text, uh, it has the ability to just push this table down or to fill in the necessary space so that all of that information is collected and, and presented in the way it should. But uh, we're asking for a couple of basic details here for that tax invoice, just your submission date, calculated costs, et cetera. So this is our template. And what we're going to do then is upload that into the open form system and map those fields so that the fields that I'm collecting here will display themselves in the appropriate place on the output of that PDF. So in order to do that, I'm going to head into my settings tab. And when I get to my settings, I'll find an area, a, a button called form documents. And the first thing you'll see here is your response PDF. So uh, that, that um, standard output PDF of the, the copy and uh, a copy of the, the person's submission, uh, something that looks like this. We should be really familiar with these, right? This is uh, your submission date and all of the basic receipt information, but it has a very structured look to it, right? Not a lot of flexibility here. So um, you do have some configuration abilities if you wanna make changes to that, but we're gonna skip straight to that and go to this custom documents area. And this is where we can get really crafty with the output of these documents and the, and the information. When, um, let's delete this here. So we can start from a blank template. So when we are starting from scratch here, this is the screen that you'll see. A couple things to notice is that uh, we want to make this really easy. So we have added a step-by-step -step guide. This is a really great tool to walk through in the process of how to create one of these templates from start to finish, both a Word document as well as one of those fillable PDFs so that you can uh, make that look however you need it, as well as instructions on how to map that information. So uh, not only that step-by-step -step guide, but then an even more in-depth uh, help center documentation is available right here. So a lot of uh, information, some troubleshooting, anything that uh, you might need to know about custom documents, you'll find in this help center. So um, we, however, are already set. We've got our prepared template and we're ready to get uploading. So I'm going to click on our upload a prepared template option. And in this dialog box, before I drag and drop that template, we're going to give our document a name. So this document, I just want to call it a tax invoice. That's straightforward. That's exactly what it is. Um, that's all I need to know to be able to tell the difference between any other documents that I might upload. Uh, the document name, however, I'm going to get a little crafty with this because this is that title of the document that's going to, uh, this is the way the document will label itself, the file name uh, that will show up when a resident receives it in their inbox. So I'm actually going to call it point Russell tax invoice so that the resident knows who it's from um, and, and what it relates to. Um, but something that we can get really tricky here with is if I start to insert those same curly braces, the ones you're noticing over here, I can actually pipe information through from the form. So maybe I wanna label this document with the actual business name. So I'm starting to type in uh, the, the name of the field that exists on the open form that we are using here. And it's pulling in that field called business vendor name. So I'm actually able to pipe through the business vendor name so that the name of the actual file will be Point Russell tax invoice for the name of the business, Rachel's Brownies. So um, really easy way to get personalized uh, with those uh, template fields and uh, you can pipe answers into a whole lot of places. <clears throat> so now I'm going to upload my template by clicking or dragging and I'm just going to choose the one that I know is in my file. So this is the exact same template that we've got here. Uh, the spacing looks a little bit off but just want to make sure we're we're seeing the consistency that we are working with the same document here. And let's upload that. All right, when we upload this, a couple things to notice. We are scanning that file to make sure that it is safe. So not only for you and your internal services, but as well as your residents that they can trust that the documents they're getting from you are not corrupt or malicious. So you're getting that extra level of security there. And when we hit next, what I come to is this field mapping screen. So in my field mapping, this is exactly uh, what you're seeing here. So uh, remember, I've got my placeholders called submission date and applicant name, and you're seeing those show up right here on the left in the order and identical to what uh, what they show up here. And so if I had named labeled this anything else, maybe just total cost, right? Instead of calculated cost, you'd see total cost right here. You can make these up um, totally on your own. It's not any type of fixed field IDs or any uh, terminology you need to memorize. This is just totally up to you. So. We've got our template fields and now what I can do is select from the, the fields of the form itself 
to start saying, okay, when somebody uh, submits a form, I wanna take that submission date and pipe it into this place. And same goes for that application name. So when I click on the applicant name, it'll pipe through over there. Uh, there are a couple tricks to this um, because I know uh, so for some of these fields, you might have a lot of fields you need to map, uh, but you only need to do those once. And uh, you can also type in the names and it'll start auto finding uh, fields that begin with those same letters. So business vendor name, et cetera. So uh, let's pretend that I have finished filling this out so that I don't spend all of my time uh, clicking from drop down mem menus while I've got you. And I'm going to pull up just one. Uh, this is a copy of that same exact form. Uh, and all it has is actually the uh, a couple extra documents. And I'm going to show that we've got that finished mapping here. So same form completed mapping. And uh, what you're seeing different here is that I have used this in uh, in one response email and one workflow. And I'm going to show us how we attach these documents to uh, notifications after we've finished mapping them. So finished mapping them. And let's go back to our form document. Uh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> what comes next is, again, mapping or attaching those documents to some of the response emails. By clicking on this item here, this will take me straight to my response settings. And that's that responses area of the, the form settings that you're used to, where you can configure the confirmation message and the email that gets sent to a resident once they've submitted it, as well as the email that gets sent to your staff members. Um, so I can start adding this document to those notifications there. And then um, we'll tab over to our workflows tab to attach them to workflow emails, but you've got some help center documentation to, to guide you as necessary there. So when I go back to my form documents, we can see um, all I am is just a few steps down the road. I've attached multiple documents here, and I'm going to just show quickly in our workflow. Now um, I've got a couple of steps set up here. And when I click into my submit transition and my notifications, we can see that I've got multiple documents attached to each of my notifications that go to my respondent and my reviewer. And if I click on edit for one of these transitions, we can again see, all right, I've got my application attachment as well as that same tax receipt. So just a few steps down the road, have already attached that receipt, that mapped PDF. Um, and I could even add a response PDF to this one if I want to. So let's save our notification and save. So we have mapped our, we created our open form, we've created our template, and then we have mapped our template in our form documents. And so now we're actually ready to start receiving those submissions. So let's say we've got a resident who has this uh, front facing form, they can go through the process and fill out all of their business vendor information. Um, again, I won't spend uh, our time together just filling out a bunch of fields because what I have here, of course, is one that has already been filled out. So let's take a look at the output. And I have too many Zoom windows. Here we go. <clears throat> so I attached that form to the submission receipt. And here's an example of that email that comes through. And I've got an attachment that says Point Russell tax receipt named with my, my vendor name, uh, a funny character for the apostrophe. It's piping through all of that same information that I had just requested. And again, this is just the preview that comes with that email, but you can see side by side, that this is the same document replacing in, uh, in those placeholders, all of the relevant information that we asked for. Uh, another example, just so you can see it, is a permit certificate. So again, uh, a separate document that pipes through different information in a totally different layout. But this is that official certificate that I can print and hang in the window of my brownie truck so that starting this weekend, I am licensed and valid to run my operation for four days. I've paid my total fees and I am good to go. So um, those are a couple examples of the ways that this can output. And again, you can design your uh, Word documents and your templates as you like and make sure that those have all of your, your city branding and, um, and everything that you need to be successful there. I believe that's it. Um, one last thing to show here. So uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I am a resident, right, that has submitted that uh, food truck application and um, I, as the staff member, what I can do is go into my responses tab and what we'll start to see is all of those form documents now attached to each of those responses. So I have four total documents, your default response PDF that of course is going to come with every single um, form. 
And then the tax receipt, I prepared a permit certificate and even an application. So if um, if for some reason I've lost my permit certificate or I uh, can't find my tax receipt and I reach out to the city to get another copy of that, the staff member can go in and download that uh, tax receipt and trigger that through an email to send back to me so I have it for my records. But you've got those all nicely attached to your uh, to each individual submission. And another thing, uh, just to kind of see this all come full circle is, uh, so my food truck permit is going through a workflow step. And so when I'm in the review center, we can see how each of these uh, responses will transit, uh, will proceed through a workflow when I take action to move this uh, this particular form straight to the approval stage and hit continue. I can see in that confirmation message. So before I trigger the notification to go to the resident, I can see which documents are attached to each of those as well as the the notification message that they're going to get and add any further information that I might need to. So to start to finish, that is a very quick look. I know we kind of teeter uh, here on uh, trying to be uh, thorough and efficient um, and, and not totally overwhelming, but still give you a really good idea of how this is working from start to finish. Um, but that is uh, Open Forms custom documents in a nutshell. I'm going to head back to our presentation here. All right, so with that feature demonstration, uh, what we really hope that you've seen is um, one, our commitment to helping you serve your residents better and that we just know that this is going to improve your resident experience as well as, and, and possibly most importantly, save you a bunch of time. So no longer having to populate those documents manually or send them through one by one and then keep track of which, which certificates have been sent and which ones haven't. Um, open forms, of course, with workflow manages each submission, routes them through to the right internal reviewers, reminds them when we forget, right? How many times have we forgotten to do uh, a task because we went on vacation or we got sick, just like I did last week. Um, but uh, open forms with that kind of reminders feature in the workflow settings uh, will keep me on track to make sure not only am I receiving the necessary information that I need, but then following through with it to that point of completion. And then uh, once it's completed, uh, being able to automatically populate data into those formalized and branded PDFs and then distribute them so that uh, in an ideal world, I actually never have to handle a, a Word document again. And I mean, uh, I'll, I'll knock on wood because wouldn't that be a lovely, a lovely work experience if we never had to handle Word documents again, but at least not for this kind of thing, getting those uh, certificates and formal documents sent out to your residents uh, can be taken care of. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what's next because uh, paramount to our beliefs and philosophy at Open Cities is always iterating and improving. And uh, we know that the things that we have lined up on our roadmap uh, will only enhance this, uh, not only this feature, but workflow and open forms as a whole. So uh, one of the things, and of course, these are in no particular order. So um, one of them is managing your team. And what we are working to do is uh, build an Azure integration so that you can authorize and manage identities through uh, in open forms through your Azure Active Directory. So um, that looks like just being able to uh, log in using your Azure AD credentials, a single sign-on experience to help make that really seamless. But down the road, something that we also hope to accomplish is uh, the ability to dynamically route your submissions to a role rather than a person. So imagine being able to assign an entire department to a certain step or to um, assign uh, a, a dream team of people that can take action on something instead of uh, having to manually assign each individual person. Uh, and what happens when that person goes on leave or what happens when they leave the organization, uh, being able to backfill that with other people who have the same role inside your active directory. Uh, and another option there is the ability to route your forms dynamically based on a hierarchy. So imagine that I am submitting a request for paid time off and I want that to go to my supervisor. And instead of having to build a step for every single supervisor, uh, what the system could do with this Active Directory integration is route that form directly to my supervisor based on the hierarchy that we occupy in our Active Directory. So that's one of them. Uh, next is office use only fields. And we know that's certainly going to be helpful and help enhance the custom documents feature specifically with that ability to add, uh, you know, that little gray box in the corner of some of those formal documents with office use only fields, such as the person who uh, made the approval or uh, made perhaps even a specific uh, ID number or um, 
a permit number or somebody who uh, can sign off on it with an official record and that timestamp. So not uh, we're not talking here about any kind of specific office use only forms, but things that you can make up as you need them and attach those fields to um, the forms after they've been submitted and have it be part of the official record. Continuing on is the ability to request for further information. So um, imagine that you've asked your resident for specific information and it's come back incomplete or incorrect. And my favorite example is uh, when we say, uh, we've asked you for your driver's license, but we got a picture of your cat and we really like cats, but that's not what we need in order to be able to approve your submission. So instead of having that resident complete that application over again from the very beginning. Uh, what about the ability to send just that one field back, request that information, get it corrected, and then populate that into the official record response so that all of that is aggregated together and we've got one complete and accurate uh, record inside of open forms. And that brings up the last one is the ability to connect to open to other systems. So when uh, let's save information where that information lives. So at the end of a submission, whether it's approved or denied, we capture that PDF and save it somewhere. Right now it gets saved in open forms, but we know that you have other systems of record, like an archive management system or a trim or OneDrive, whatever that is, uh, looking at the ability to be able to push that information, um, the form submissions, the official records, the documents that we sent out and have them live in your official record uh, uh, systems of record. And then uh, further, one of the options that we uh, would love to see is the ability to pull that information from where it lives. So imagine, let's use an example here to, to illustrate this. Imagine that you've submitted a request to register your pet. Uh, your request has been approved, but there's still the process of getting the tags printed and shipped, right? Those little dangly tags that go on their collar. So, um, and there you use a third party, the, the city uses a third party system to keep track of that. So. What if you could submit your uh, your receipt ID into an open form and have that open form pull back the status of that third party application, that third party platform that is managing the, the printing and shipping of the license tag and say, hey, here's where we're at, or uh, this is when you could expect completion or any other pertinent information that might help me as a resident stay informed of my engagements and interactions with the city. So. Um, those are just a couple of things. There's definitely more that we are looking at, but a couple of the highlights that we wanted to make sure you guys are aware of. So um, really appreciate your uh, participation here. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. And if anybody is brave enough to, to raise your hand and share, um, we got all of the use cases that we have um, built this with, uh, built custom documents with in mind from our community ideas forum. So that looks like tax invoices and branded submissions. Um, uh, public notices of approval or COVID permits even, right? Super pertinent right now. Food vendor permits, license renewals, boat ramp permits, and legal letters. Um, those are just some of the examples that we heard from you that we think this would be really useful for, but would uh, love it if anybody's brave enough to unmute themselves and uh, let us know of any other ideas that you think of that you think this would be really helpful for, or any feedback or thoughts or what you're excited about for custom documents. Um, I'm going to be silent for 60 seconds and see if we can get anybody to chime in. <laughs> 